In today's lesson titled Using Cumulative Frequency to Calculate Quartiles and Percentiles, your objective is students will be able to construct a cumulative frequency curve, which is a new concept, and use it to determine quartiles. So let's get started. And the first thing we need to learn how to do is set up a cumulative frequency table. And we're going to use a cumulative frequency table to develop our cumulative frequency curve. So to do this, we're going to go over an example. And in this example, it says your IB teacher wants to determine how his students did on a draft internal assessment. Internal assessments are long papers. Below is a grouped frequency table that contains the student's mark, mark meaning their grade, and associated frequency curve. And their grade is reported in percentages, so this is 1 to 10 percent, 11 to 20 percent, so on and so forth. So we're going to create a cumulative frequency curve, which is the main concept for today. And then we're going to use it to determine Q1 the median, Q3, and the 60th percentile. So this is what we're going to use our frequency curve to calculate. So how do you create a cumulative frequency curve? Well, the first thing you do is calculate something called the upper boundary. Now, the upper boundary may seem odd, but what you're trying to do is figure out the highest number that relates to this particular class. Remember, this is broken down as a group frequency table, so these are different classes, 1 through 10, 11 through 20. So the highest for this particular class is 10.5 because it's the average between the 10 and the 11. The highest for this particular class is 20.5 because it's the average of the 20 and the 21. So the way I calculate the upper boundary is I add the highest number from the current class and the lowest number from the next class, add those two numbers together, divide by 2, and I got 10.5. And I repeat this process for all my classes to figure out what the highest number is, which is the upper boundary. This is the calculation for the second one, and then I could repeat the calculation over and over again to calculate these numbers here. Now, once I'm done with the upper boundary, my next step is to calculate the cumulative frequency. Now, the cumulative frequency, cumulative means put together, frequency means how often, is simply calculated by adding up all our number of students and frequencies as we go. So for 1 through 10, there's only one student, so our cumulative frequency is 1. Now, for 11% through 20%, there's two students. So that means three total students scored between 1% and 20%. So I do 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2, and I get my 3. Now, four students scored between a 21% and a 30%. So now I'm going to add that 4 to my previous cumulative frequency, 3, so it's 7. So now I have seven total students that scored between a 1 and a 30. I keep doing this process until I get to the end. And this last number right here, this 32, that's the total frequency, which we'll call n, for the purpose of this particular lesson. So our total cumulative frequency n is 32. So once you finish your table so that you have an upper boundary column and a cumulative frequency column, you are ready to start graphing. Now, I do want to note that whenever you're creating a cumulative frequency curve, your upper boundary is going to be your x-axis and your cumulative frequency is always going to be your y-axis. Every single time, upper boundary x-axis, cumulative frequency y-axis. Now, it is important to make sure we label them correctly. So in the directions, it says using a scale of 1 centimeter for every 10% and 1 centimeter for every 4 students create a cumulative frequency curve of the data shown. So that means on the x-axis, our upper boundary, each of these squares, these little kind of larger squares, represents 10%. Those are 1 centimeter. And on the y-axis, each square represents 4 students. So as you can see, I counted by 10s on the x-axis and 4s on the y-axis. So now we're ready to graph. The first point says 10.5 and 1. So I'm going to go a little past the 10 and go up to what looks like about 1, which is right here. Then 20.5 and 3. 20.5 and 3 looks like it's about here, and you're going to have to do some estimating when you do this, especially with the small graph paper. 30.5 and 7 looks like it's probably right about here. Sorry, that's a bit of a big point. And the next one is 40.5 and 14. That's going to be right in the middle here. 40.5 and 14. Then we have 50.5 and 19. That's going to be almost at 20. It'll be right about here. Then 60.5 and 27. So that's a big jump up to right about here. Then 70.5 and 29. So that's a very small jump up to about here. 
then 80.5 and 31. So that's going to go up to right about here. Then 90.5 and 32. So it's going to be right on the line here. And 100 is also at 32, so that's going to be right on the line about here. So there are the points for our cumulative frequency curve. So now we can connect them to actually finish our curve out. So I'm going to connect my points. Bear with me. And that's our cumulative frequency curve. And obviously, you want it to be smooth. So there you go. That's our cumulative frequency curve for our student marks and number of students who scored those particular scores. So now that we've developed our cumulative frequency curve, we need to answer the last portion of the question, which says we're going to use it to determine the Q1, the median, the Q3, and the 60th percentile of the data. So what I'm going to now do is show you the formulas you need to use and how you apply those formulas to answer those four questions. So the first thing we need to calculate is Q1. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to do n plus 1 divided by 4, and that's going to get our Q1 frequency which is going to tell you our y-axis, and we're going to use that value to figure out our x-axis, which is our mark percentage. Now we know n is total cumulative frequency, and that's 32 plus 1 divided by 4 gets you 8.25. So that's the cumulative frequency associated with Q1. I drew this line right here, because that shows that 8.25, if I draw a line to the curve, it hits the curve right here. Now what's the associated mark there? Well, the associated mark there is about a 33%, so our Q1 is about 33%. We do a similar process for the median, which is Q2. The only difference is instead we're going to do n plus 1 divided by 2. So in this case, we have 32 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 16.5. That's our median frequency. So again, I'm going to find that location on the graph and draw a line there to our curve. Now, what's the mark percentage associated with that point on the curve? Well, it's about 45%. So our median, or Q2, is about 45%. For Q3, the formula is 3 times n plus 1 divided by 4. That gets us our Q3 frequency. So that's 3 times 32 plus 1 divided by 4, which is 24.75. I'm going to draw my line right here almost at 25. It hits the curve right here, which is associated with about a 56 percentile, or 56 percent as our Q3. The last piece is the 60th percentile of the data. This is the trickiest formula. So the formula when you're finding percentiles is P times N plus 1 divided by 100, which is per P percent frequency. So in this case, we're going to do 60 times 32 plus 1 divided by 100 because 60 is the percentile we're trying to find. When I do this in my calculator, I get a 19.8. So I'm going to go to 19.8 as my frequency, almost at 20. It hits the curve right here, which is associated with right about a 52% for the 60th percentile. That right there is your video on how to create cumulative frequency curves and find quartiles and percentiles. Good luck.